Welcome to Firebase release notes for June, where we cover recent big and small updates from Firebase. Now we've got six releases to cover today, so let's dig in right away. If you develop for iOS or other Apple platforms and use Crashlytics, you probably know already that it uses dsim files to show you human-readable stack traces for crashes from those platforms. You could already upload those dsim files to Crashlytics from your build script, but you can now also drag and drop the dsim files right into the Crashlytics dashboard. Visit the dsims tab in the Firebase console to learn more and try it. We're working on more improvements to dsim handling, so if you develop for Apple platforms, be sure to stay tuned for further updates in the coming months. The performance monitoring dashboard in the Firebase console shows what percentile of your users is seeing certain performance in their app. The default percentile now aligns with platform-specific standards, which means that for your users on Android and Apple platforms, it defaults to highlighting performance at the 90th percentile while for your web users, it does this at the 75th percentile. To learn more, see the link to track key metrics in your dashboard that I included below. The performance monitoring dashboard was also updated to display the most relevant troubleshooting information for your app in one place, helping you to quickly identify and address performance issues affecting your users. To learn more about troubleshooting with performance monitoring, see the View More Data for a specific trace page that I linked below. When you use Firebase Test Lab's mobile device farm to test your app builds on physical or virtual devices that you don't own, you can use RoboScripts to automate QA tasks and to enable continuous integration and pre-launch testing strategies. Test Lab now offers details documentation for RoboScripts, including new features like executing ADB shell commands inside the script and assertions on what the application state should be at any point in your script. To learn more, see the links to running a RoboScript and the RoboScript reference guide in the description below. We're upgrading the supported Node versions for many of our tools and SDKs to support versions 14 and 16, and we are deprecating or dropping support for Node version 12. Specifically, version 11 of our command line tools, including the emulator suite, dropped support for running on Node 12, and now requires Node version 14.18 or 16.4 or later. We also deprecate the support for Node.js 12 in version 10.3 of our admin SDK, and we dropped support completely in release 11 of the admin SDK. While the Firebase SDKs for Unity only support releasing games that target iOS and Android devices, many of our SDKs can be used on your desktop environment while developing. Well, this limited desktop support for development is now also officially available for Apple Silicon chips, widening the range of supported hardware, or rather, reducing the need to run an emulation layer. If you run into any problems on this or any other supported platform, be sure to find a bug report on the repo that I linked below. And finally, the remote config dashboard in the Firebase console now shows when the last change to each parameter and condition was made and who made that change, making it easier than ever to find out who broke your build. Those were all the updates we have time for today. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel below. My name is Puff and I'll see you on a future episode of Firebase Release Notes.